Right. I would, we, we really tried to facilitate that there would be a representative of the Northern Irish organizing team here to do a far better show than me about why you must come to Belfast. So just, I'll say a few things and you can imagine how the, the real story will be. Would be. <coughs> because I've only been one day in Belfast. So. Uh, the key thing uh, is, I think, that we've done for the first time uh, this in a bidding system. So all member associations were invited to come with a proposed bid for 2016. Uh, three associations worked on the bid, and in the end there was one which was approved. This was this one. Because it is in a week, which is 100 years after basically the Easter Rising, a key moment in the unfolding of the conflict in Northern Ireland, the dividing of society. It's also 50 years after, it was 50 years after the Easter Rising, which was a, a, a point of reliving of the conflict and intensification of the conflict. Now, I do not expect that there will be, during this conference, an intensification of the project. Rather, I hope that we will use this opportunity as a community of history educators that has some ideas about the difficult past, how to navigate it, how to respect different perspectives, how to generate empathy for the other and things like that, that we will actually contribute to the events during that week. So there will be commemorations, there will be public events, there will be exhibitions, there will be museum visits about the centenary. What we tried to do, so in, uh, in June, uh, we, uh, there will be a mission to go to Belfast and we are then talking to all the partners, including universities, museums, city council and all that, to give you uh, a program that is as good as this one. I can say very, I think this was a very good conference, but we'll get to that later when we conclude uh, this evening. One other thing is important why I invite you to come to Belfast or to tell your colleagues to go to Belfast is that there is no History Teachers Association yet, but the team of people that came with this bid want to establish one. So this will actually be the inaugural conference. And that would be very, and it's of course a mixed association, like so many other associations in European. So I could say, put the dates in your agendas in pencil. Uh, follow all our announcements that are going to come. Oh, uh, sorry, I forget one important thing. Uh, we have changed uh, the fee for the conference because the hotel. The nights are not included, so it's significantly lower. Why have we done that? Because uh, we have always had the philosophy of the package deal, right? Uh, and we have kind of looked a bit strangely at people that escaped from that package deal because we negotiated the price together for everybody to be together in that one hotel. The hotels in Belfast are plenty. It's a capital city. And in light of Erasmus funding, we've noticed that it is, in a way, easier and also for many participants who seek their own accommodation uh, have some of their own standards regarding stay that we let that go a bit we will negotiate hotel prices for some i think two or three central hotels that they're together and we of course hope that all of you can go there but if you have i don't know airbnb or a cousin or a private or whatever that is all uh, up to you so the fee itself for the full conference will be 570 euro including all the meals the, the, the packages, the whole thing, but not the stick. Does anyone have any questions now about the annual conference of 2016? Okay. If do you have one? Yeah. Okay. Is it only for five days? Uh, the formula is going to be the same as always. No, the the dates, sir. The dates are not then it should be until 26th at the departure date. I'm sorry. But the, the yeah. We 
as it's usual, at this stage, we have the general announcement. After visiting, we'll have gone through the whole program in the site, but it's good that you raise it so that we are aware of that. Uh, of clarity. Gaero from uh, Barcelona, because we're 2% of the project. And the reason um, why we do it at the General Assembly is actually because it's uh, a project where we try to involve as many European member organizations as possible. So uh, the project focuses on the EU. So unfortunately, it's only limited to the members from the EU. Um, and the members from the EU, the contact person, president, has been contacted to nominate an official delegate for this project. Um, so that's just good to keep in mind. And then I would like to get the word to Fernando. And thanks for coming. <coughs> Thank you, Stephen. Um, thank you, Lucrio, for allowing me to address the General Assembly. That's a privilege that can be explained exactly as Steve, Stephen has uh, already mentioned. Uh, I'm addressing to you because this project uh, is part of the Europeo um, uh, Action Program this year, the coming year. And uh, the uh, associations which are members of Europeo have been already involved, and the project is already in the making. That's why I'm here. I'm not sending any new product to all of you, all right? Um, this project is the official name is Teaching UK Meaning at School. And it has one objective, which is very important material objective, has great ambitions and also great uh, potential. Uh, what's the objective? The objective is very clear. It's basically trying to map, try to find out how the European Union, uh, European Union related to top topics are being presented and represented in textbooks, history of other social sciences in the last two years of compulsory education all across the European Union. Now, the idea basically is trying to find out whether we have anything in common, whether the way textbooks, the way the textbooks all across Europe represent and explain the European Union, whether all across Europe there is anything in common. We are trying to figure that out. And once we figure that out, we will see the quality of that common element and if necessary, we will propose ways of improving that sort of common ground, right? So the idea basically is doing something that has not been done so far. It's not that great altogether, but it hasn't been done. And it hasn't been done basically because of linguistic difficulties. It is impossible for any kind of single scholar or very narrow group trying to find out that because of the linguistic difficulties involved. So we needed a Europeo. Eurocree with all these associations all in Europe, they were the ones that were able to provide that sort of basic information. Now this is the material objective. What's ambition? The ambition is basically once we have that, trying to influence the way the European Union is being taught at the school. All right? Who is going to then we'll talk about the potential later? Who's going to be carrying out that sort of project? There are basically um, um, educators in, in, in active already in the different educational systems across Europe, those who are already teaching history and other social sciences, those who know the teaching materials, they're going to be focusing on textbooks. I know that has a lot of limitations. I know that some educational systems are trying not to use textbooks. But that's, that's it's not the common issue. Uh, we need to use textbooks because otherwise this project cannot be handled. It has to be handled on the basis of narrowing down of the use of textbooks. Because textbooks, whether we might not use them, textbooks reflect some sort of common idea about what students in that sort of educational system should be learning about the European Union. Right? Um, the project is already in the making. I mean, we're going to have a first, uh, we're going to have uh, those who are going to be involved. We are going to have people involved from all the educational systems. We are not talking about a country basis. We are talking about educational system basis. So for instance, in, 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 in Belgium, I have uh, two or three people, depending upon the linguistic, uh, um, the, the linguistic educational system. In Cyprus, we have two people. In Spain, we have representative of the different educational system of the secondary school. So we are not talking about countries. We are not talking about 28 countries. We are talking about educational systems. We are talking about 30 something of educational systems. 
uh, what we have is these people that have already uh, shown uh, the, the, the disponibility to, to participate in the project. They're going to report uh, to Euroclear at the end of May on very basic information concerning the educational system, concerning the textbooks, concerning the what are the social sciences uh, subjects that got, could be analyzed to be analyzed in this project. That's going to be at the end of May. We're going to have a first meeting in September. I think it's 25th. 27th September this year, 2015, in Barcelona. And at that point in time, what we will have is discuss what we have. I mean, we are trying to figure out in that meeting what we have in common. And, that, and then the plan starts in September 2015. Because it is at that point in time, once we know what we are doing, then we need to initiate, which is the second stage of this project, which has to do with trying to influence, trying to inform society, and that means the local, regional, national, and European level, how to, to inform them about what we are doing, how we are doing that in a comparative perspective. It will be the first time, the first time something like that is being carried out. At that point in time, then we have all these diffusion and dissemination strategy, in which what we have is these local partners in a comparative perspective, influencing at the local level, regional level, the national level, and the European level. And what's the potential? Well, the potential of this project, this is a project that might, seem, might appear to be very simple, but it has great potential. Why? Because from here, once we know that, what we could try to get is a very ambitious state in which, boy, why not try to propose one single common lesson on European, European integration history all across Europe? We have a single currency, isn't it? Why couldn't we have a single lesson? On the European, that would never one. One we could have, we could, from this project, a lot of teaching materials could be generated. A lot of teaching materials could be generated. A lot of training, um, uh, training um, exercises could be generated. And we could also try to establish, with the cooperation of Euroclear and all these uh, associations, we could get some sort of permanent observatory about these things. Permanent observatory with how the European Union is being, is being taught and is being learned in this way. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, oh, that's right. I just want to thank Anna. Thank you. Are there, are there any questions about the project? Let me, let me answer the question before the question is formulated. This project, the world of potential is that this project could be expanded geographically. And it could be next, the next stage. It could just go beyond the 28 members of the European Union. It could just be gathering all the all countries talking about how the European Union is being perceived outside of the European Union, which would be a fascinating topic. Cannot be involved here for one very simple reason. You need to get a, a, a project which is workable. We need to get a good product first. Once we have that good product, then everything else is for the potential. Thank you. <laughs> Program and some of you uh, attended uh, the session, so it might be uh, repetitive information. Sorry about that, but uh, I believe some of you haven't heard about this new tool, which is uh, the uh, School Gateway Catalog. Um, uh, actually, it starts from here. Um, well, uh, Erasmus Plus program um, is the uh, EU program in the fields of education, sports, and youth uh, for the period of 2014 and 2000. 20, sorry about this one thing hanging there. Uh, yes, uh, we, we hope that it will be an indefinite period. <laughs> uh, 
and we can all benefit from this program. Uh, well, uh, the program is actually uh, is created to support the uh, EU 2020 strategy uh, for the growth of jobs, inclusion, equality, uh, European values, and. Um, so uh, the program, uh, actually, the special thing about the Erasmus Plus program is that it's the synergy of uh, all uh, previous EU programs. So it doesn't have uh, any um, uh, division between the fields of education or between the uh, levels of education. So it covers actually it's an integrated program which includes in itself different areas about youth, education, uh, job growth, uh, the uh, entrepreneurship, so different, different values and areas. So that's a unique thing about this program, which actually makes it also very complicated. Um, well, if we, um, I, I want to be very brief because I don't want to take your time from the discussion group, because we can always share information also through email, and also there's a very good guide, uh, Erasmus Plus guide, available on the website of the European Commission. Um, the program uh, is uh, constructed of three um, action areas. So um, it's key action one, two, and three. Uh, key action one is uh, the um, action which actually relates to uh, our members most of uh, most of all because this is uh, about the mobility uh, of the uh, teachers and also the staff of the associations. Um,